بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله is from the name of Allah عز وجل that he gathered us in this gathering as we will come to know إن شاء الله I haven't been in this masjid for at least two years so it's a blessing upon me and I'm so happy to see faces that I used to see many years ago attending our lectures and uh, as I said this is a truly a blessing upon us we ask Allah جل, that we can benefit from this gathering and leave improved and in our iman and in the state of our souls inshallah so the Prophet وسلم, he said as a glad tiding in the hadith in Sahih Muslim ما جلس قوم مجلسا يذكرون الله تعالى إلا حفتهم الملائكة وغشيتهم الرحمة وذكرهم الله في من عنده in the hadith in Sahih Muslim the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave this amazing glad tiding. He said that no people gather together to sit in a gathering wherein they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that the angels descend upon them and encompass them and mercy encompasses them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them in a gathering which is better than the gathering they are in. Mentions them in a company which is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So straight away, the thing is you're going to find that sitting in the masjid, listening to the words of Allah, listening to words of the Prophet you're going to feel an increase in Iman. You're going to feel an increase in happiness. And that's not because you're sitting with me in my company, but rather because you're listening to the words of Allah and the words of the Prophet So this is a bounty upon us which we should appreciate. Who is the most beloved and the most loved? And this is a question for the youngsters here. Who is the most loved? in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From amongst the creation, who does Allah love the most? Take a guess. Yeah, go on. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Exactly, well done. Jazakallah khair. So the most beloved to Allah is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what did Allah command the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with to seek an increase? So Allah to his most beloved, gave a command. What is that command that he gave to his most beloved? To seek an increase. And this particular thing, in knowledge, right? Raise your voice when you answer me because I'm a bit deaf. So the Prophet ﷺ was commanded, zidni ilma, and say, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. So Allah chose his most beloved to give him that command. And the Prophet ﷺ emphasizes this in the hadith in Bukhari where he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Whomsoever Allah wants good for, He gives him understanding of the religion. So this is love from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He commands the Prophet وسلم, to seek an increase in knowledge. And then the Prophet وسلم, tells us that whomsoever Allah wants good for, He gives him an increase or He gives him understanding of the religion. So what is the converse situation if somebody is not seeking knowledge? What does that mean? What can the person reflect about himself? If I'm not seriously seeking knowledge about the fundamentals of my religion, what can the person say about himself? Is he receiving good? He's not receiving good. Rather, he's in a state of hurman. He's in a state where he's being prohibited, uh, prevented from receiving good because he's not on the path of seeking knowledge. And this is clearly from the words of the Prophet It's not something that I'm trying to make up myself. So if it comes from the Prophet take it to heart. Ponder upon it. If you are not seeking knowledge of your religion, the fundamentals, and you're not implementing those fundamentals, then know that you are far from receiving good from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Daily, our souls are being exposed to things which are not good for it. Daily, we are seeing things which are detrimental for us. Daily, we are hearing things which are detrimental to the soul. Daily, we speak speech which is not good for the soul. So as time goes on, what happens to the soul? Every day, that dot of sin, we always say it's only a minor sin. It's only a movie, it's nothing wrong with it. It's only music, minor sins in their, in their estimation. But these minor sins, they build up. Every mountain is made from what? It's made from stones. So the persistence in minor sins, they end up being major sins. They end up affecting us in a major way. So the soul becomes sick because we're continually being exposed to these things. The eyes, the ears and the mouth are gateways to the heart and gateways to the soul. So over time, your soul becomes sick. 
but the ones who sit in the gatherings of the knowledge, in the gatherings with the words of the Prophet ﷺ are being mentioned, in the gatherings with the words of Allah are being mentioned and explained, then how is the situation of their soul? The situation of their soul is that their soul will be purified and their soul will be brought back to a healthy state. So that is what we want to know, is how to get to that state. And that's what we want to try to embed in our hearts and our souls, the importance of seeking knowledge and the importance of traversing the path of trying to understand the fundamentals of our deen and to be with the company of the Prophet ﷺ through his words, the company of the Sahaba through studying their seerah, etc, etc. Imam Ali radiallahu anhu, he said, كفى بالعلم شرفا أن يدعيه من ليس بأهله وكفى بالجهل عارا أن يتبرأ منه من هو فيه Ali radiallahu anhu said in these few lines of poetry to try to make us understand he said it suffices it suffices to show you how raised in high status knowledge is that everybody tries to claim to be from it when he is not from it and it suffices you to show you how low in status ignorance is that everybody who is in it tries to free himself from it. In the sense that the ones who are not knowledgeable, they like to claim that they are knowledgeable, right? They claim that they can, end, they can talk about issues of the deen, but they don't have the right to do so because they have no knowledge. So this shows you the status of knowledge, that everybody wants to be a part of it, even though they don't traverse the path of knowledge. And the ones who are ignorant, the ones who know not about their religion, they never want it to be ascribed to them that they are ignorant. So nobody likes to be told that you are ignorant. Nobody likes to be told that you are jahil. But then how come when it comes to the religion and to the practice and to the worship of Allah we don't care to learn? If we were to squeeze ourselves and we were to truly ask ourselves fundamental questions, I'm talking basic questions. Year one in university of studying Islamic sciences, me and you would find difficulty in answering those questions. So really, we are still in a state of ignorance and we have to lift that ignorance from ourselves so that we don't be accounted from amongst those who are mentioned in that statement of Ali radiallahu anhu. Any moment that you spend seeking knowledge, traversing the path of knowledge, that moment will be blessed for you. It's narrated that a man, he came to Abu Darda radiallahu anhu. Where did the man come from? He came, not from where you've come from to learn knowledge, and what you've done is a good thing, may Allah bless you. Some of you came from a half hour drive away. Some of you came from an hour drive away. That's good, may Allah reward you immensely for that. But this man seeking knowledge, he came to Abu Darda, who was in Damascus, in Syria, from Medina, the Medina of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in those times. No air conditioned cars, no flights, traveling on the back of a donkey probably or a camel, probably took him a month. He came to Abu Darda radiallahu anhu and he said, I've come to you to seek a hadith which I heard that you have from the Prophet sallallahu Abu Darda radiallahu anhu said, are you sure you didn't come because of tijara? You sure you didn't come because of trade? He said, no. He said, did anything else bring you here? He said, no, except that I want to get this hadith from you. So then Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, he said, Sama'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, I heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, Man salaka tariqan yaltamisu fihi ilm, sahalallahu lahu tariqan ila al-janna. Whoever traverses a path with the intention of seeking knowledge, then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will make it easy for him to reach Jannah. That's the first part, right? You traverse the path with the intention of seeking knowledge, Allah will ease your path to where? To Jannah, which is where we all want to go. And the hadith continues, and he said, وَإِنَّ الْمَلَائِكَةِ لَتَدَعُوا أَجْنِحَتِهَا رِضًا لِطَالِبِ الْإِلْمِ He said the angels, when they see the student of knowledge traversing this path, they lower their wings out of humility and out of, out of happiness for what this Talib al-Ilm is doing. Picture it, envisage it, envisage. Angels everywhere on the path of this person who is going to the masjid to sit with somebody to teach him knowledge. And they are lowering their wings out of happiness and out of honor for that person. How magnificent that is. How amazing that is. And the hadith, it continues. The Prophet ﷺ said, وَإِنَّ طَالِبَ الْإِلْمِ يَسْتَغْفِرُ لَهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ حَتَّى الْحَيْتَانِ فِي الْبَحْرِ And he said, verily, the student of knowledge, everything in the heavens and the earth, seek forgiveness for him 
even the fish that are in the sea. Even the fish that are in the sea. Everything is seeking forgiveness for that person who's making the effort to learn the knowledge of his religion. And the hadith continues. The Prophet ﷺ said, He said, and verily, the virtue of the scholar above and beyond the virtue of the slave, of the normal worshipper, is like that of the moon and that of the rest of the stars. Because in the night, which gives you more light? It's the moon, right? And not the rest of the stars. The moon is bright. The moon is the one that stands out. Likewise, the alim is the one that stands out from amongst the rest of the worshippers. And the hadith continues. The Prophet ﷺ said, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi and verily, the scholars are the inheritors of the prophets. Everybody knows what an inheritor is, right? You take from what the dead person has left behind. They are the inheritors of the prophets. And the prophets do not leave behind wealth in the forms of dirham, etc. But what they leave behind is knowledge. So whoever takes from that pool of knowledge, from that sea of knowledge, then he has taken something which is great and amazing. So this amazing hadith, if you ponder upon it and reflect upon it, it shows you that there are so many virtues for the one who seeks the basics of his religion, for the one who seeks to learn his religion for the sake of implementing it and pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So look how this person and the people of knowledge they go far to gain the hadith, to gain the statements of the Prophet ﷺ. You know why they do that? Because whatever the heart loves, the limbs will move towards. If somebody loves a particular boxer, he will travel the whole country to see that person boxing. If somebody loves a particular football team, they will save up money so that they can watch that match and no matter how far away it is, they will travel to get there. So whatever your heart is in love with, your limbs will take you there. It's impossible that your limbs will disobey your heart. The limbs do what the heart tells it to do. So if your heart loves and understands the value and it understands how important seeking knowledge is in this religion of ours, then your limbs will take that path and traverse that path of seeking knowledge. So the hadith also mentioned that look, that knowledge is from the inheritance of the prophets. So you sitting here now listening to the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu you should feel elated. You should feel so happy that I'm involved in taking from the inheritance that the Prophet ﷺ left behind. Understand its importance. Understand its value. There is no time, like I said, that if you spent seeking knowledge, you will never waste that time. You will never regret that time because you are seeking the inheritance of the Prophets. You are doing the job of the Prophets. قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرًا أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي Allah Azawajal says, say that this is my path. I call upon it based upon clear knowledge and guidance, me and those who follow me. So if you are a true follower of the Prophet ﷺ, you do what the Prophet ﷺ did, which is that you learn the religion and you teach the religion. Of course, in order for you to teach the religion to yourself, your beloved children and your family, you need to learn something from the religion. So this is the inheritance of the Prophets. This was their job, to take people away from dhulamat ila nur, to take people away from the darkness of sin and shirk, to the guidance and the light of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So thank Allah from the depths of your hearts that that's what you're doing. You've come to the masjid by the permission of Allah. Everybody wanted you to go somewhere else. They were whispering to you. They were saying, come today to such and such place. There's a barbecue there. There's a football match there. We're going to get together to watch that movie over there. We're going to have fun. We're going to go there. I'm not saying all of this is not allowed, though some of it is not allowed. But what Allah chose for you is something much greater. He chose you to be from amongst the few that are sitting in this masjid, listening to the words of the Prophet So be elated and let your heart be attached to this. Let your heart be happy and thankful. Going back to the long hadith which I just mentioned of Abu Darda radiallahu anhu. Question, why and how is the person's path made easy to Jannah? The hadith where it mentioned that the one who seeks the path of knowledge, then Allah will make his path to Jannah easy. Why and how? Very good. That's the key element. Because you're seeking the knowledge of how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do people go astray? There's two reasons why people go astray. What are they? 
You've heard me say them many times if you've come to the previous lectures. Shubahat and Shahawat. Shahawat meaning the desires of the soul, the lowly debased desires, right? You go astray because of those if you follow them. The second reason you could go astray is because of Shubahat, doubts. You're not sure how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you end up doing acts of worship which are, which are either completely rejected, completely wrong, or you do an act of worship which has some basis, but then you do it in the wrong way. But the student of knowledge who is seeking the knowledge for the sake of implementing it and pleasing Allah, he knows how to worship Allah. In every situation, he's guided because he's within the hadith all the time. He's within the verses of the Quran all the time. He's living with the Salaf. He's always reading about those amazing personalities that came before us. So his worldview is what? The lenses by which he views the world is the Quran, the Sunnah and the Salaf that came before him. So he's always by the permission of Allah going to be guided in every situation. You're not going to find him from the ones who worship Allah in the wrong manner. You're not going to find him from the ones who quickly and easily fall into innovation. He'll be protected. Why is he protected? Because he's swimming in the verses of Allah. He's swimming in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He's in the company of the Sahaba. He's in the company of the righteous scholars that came before and even those who live today. So there's no way he will go astray. So this is the answer to the question that I posed. And it's something which is very important to know. That's why Imam Bukhari, based upon the verse in the Quran, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ Know that there is none to be worshipped in truth except Allah and seek forgiveness for your sins. This was a command given to the Prophet ﷺ and of course to the rest of the Ummah. What was the command? Know, meaning have knowledge that there is none to be worshipped in truth except Allah and then do that action. What was the action? Seek forgiveness. So Imam Bukhari and others, they understood that you have to seek knowledge before you give statements of worship or you do acts of worship. Because without the knowledge, you won't know how to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. I think this has become clear now. And also in the hadith narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha in Sahih Muslim, where the Prophet said, Man amila amilan laysa alayhi amruna fahuwa Whoever does an action which is not on the way that I have left, not on the religion that I have brought, meaning the teachings of the Prophet will have it rejected. It's really sad. Some people, they put so much effort into making an act of worship, which they think is an act of worship. So much money they spend, so much effort and time, yet it's wasted. It's disregarded. Allah won't even look at it. Why? Because they didn't follow the teachings of Allah or the teaching of the Prophet So it's very sad. And it's very important that we don't be from those people. And how can we not be from those people? It's by learning the religion, the fundamentals of the religion. In the hadith that I mentioned, going back to the long hadith, I hope your memories are good today. The hadith of Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, where he said that everybody in the creation seeks forgiveness for the student of knowledge, even the fish in the sea. Why is this? The student of knowledge is doing what? He is establishing the revelation of Allah upon the earth, right? And what did Allah say? وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلُنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعْهُمُ الْكِتَابُ وَالْمِزَانِ لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْطِ And we, Allah said, we had sent the messengers and we sent with them clarity. And we sent with them the book. All of this is revelation. And we sent with them the justice so that people will live together based upon qist, based upon justice and good dealings. So safety and security on the earth comes from who? Comes from those who are teaching the religion of Allah on the earth. Those who are helping establish the religion, the revelation of Allah on the earth. And because that revelation brings about harmony, brings about justice, brings about peace, then all of the creation, they seek forgiveness for the one who aided in doing so. And it's a fact, my brothers and sisters, that justice on this earth can never be established without the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam is the most just of ways because it came from the one who created us, the one who knows us best. His system is the only system that can solve the problems of mankind. And that's why when it's established in any way, shape or form, you will see a difference in society. <clears throat> so, after having heard some of these things about listening to the virtues of the Prophet, listening to the virtues of seeking the knowledge which is left behind by the Prophets, we need to get real with ourselves. We need to check ourselves and take ourselves to account. What have I been doing for the last many amount of years? What have I been doing with my free time for the last few years? When am I going to change myself? When am I going to try and make more of an effort for me and my family? 
I can't keep continuing this way. 10 years go by, 15 years go by, 20 years go by, and I still haven't learned the language of the Quran. I still haven't learned how to recite the Quran. I still haven't learned any of the hadith or the verses of the Quran. I still don't even know who the companions of the Prophet are. I still don't even know how to explain Tawheed to my neighbor who is a non-Muslim. How much longer will this continue? We have to put a stop to it. The Prophet said in the hadith as collected by Imam Ahmad, he said, Man dakhala masjidina hada yata'allam khayran aw liyu'allimahu kana kal mujahid fi sabilillah. The Prophet said, whoever enters upon this masjid of ours, meaning the masjid in Medina, the Prophet's masjid, to study that which is good, the knowledge, or to teach which that is good, the knowledge, then he is like the one who is making jihad in the path of Allah. So though the hadith it mentioned, the masjid of the Prophet we hope and we pray from Allah that any masjid we enter upon to seek the knowledge, then we also get a share in that reward of being like the mujahid in the path of Allah. And you know that the mujahid, he has the greatest of rewards. There's none that can compare with the mujahid, fi sabilillah. So if you can share in the reward of the mujahid, then that's something you should rush to. It's something that you should never hold yourself back from. And if you don't do it, how are your kids going to learn how to do it? Who do the children emulate? You know, many a time we look at our kids by the time they're 16 and 18 and we think, where did he pick these bad habits up from? It was me. I had those bad habits. Meaning I had the lack of, I didn't exert enough energy in seeking my religion. And they saw that from me. So they took the same path. They took the religion to be something which is part time. They took the religion which is something not that serious. We can do it on the weekends, once a week on Jummah. That's when we go to the masjid. But if you're always going to the places of knowledge, you're always making that your priority and effort, the children will learn from you. They will see that this is something important and they will benefit immensely. So these young children who come to the masjid, if they continue, you will see that they will be soon sitting in this chair, inshallah, giving lectures. So ensure that you do this for yourself and you do it for your families because it's something which is imperative. So we've established, inshallah, by the permission of Allah, how blessed seeking knowledge is. And if it be the case that seeking knowledge is that blessed, then we need to learn to understand who are the people of knowledge and what is their status. <clears throat> the reason this is important to mention is because the day and age we live in today is that many people, they feel that they could speak about the people of knowledge. They feel that they have the right to criticize the scholars. Somebody has studied the religion for one year, two years, three years. He's learned the basics of how to read, basically. That's his reality. And now he feels he can get on the websites, get on Twitter, get on Facebook, and start to criticize every single scholar that is out there. Nobody on the face of the earth is right except him. He doesn't even know the ABCs of the religion. He thinks he knows them, but he doesn't, or she, and they start to criticize. You know why this happens? Because they don't respect the ulama. They don't understand the status of the ulama. So we need to touch upon this. So we cannot fall into that issue. And we can prevent others from falling into that issue. The less you know, the more you think you know. That's the reality. When you don't know, you find it easy to speak about issues of the religion. Because you don't understand that you don't know. But once you start studying the religion, you become humble because you realize that, wow, this is a huge ocean. And my reality is I don't know. I'm just a follower. So I don't have the right to criticize those people of knowledge. All I can say is that this is what I understand. And if what they're saying is what they're saying, then I have to respect that. Because it's based upon Quran, it's based upon Sunnah, and it's based upon those who came before us. So the more you learn, the more you will find that you will become humble. And you will become to understand the status of knowledge. And you will take it easy before you start to speak about ulama and students of knowledge. Allah says in the Quran, شَهِدَ اللَّهُ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّهُ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَأُولُوا الْإِلْمِ قَائِمًا بِالْقِسْطِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّهُ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Allah gives witness that there is none to be worshipped in truth except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the angels also witness this and ulul ilm and the people of knowledge also witness this. Now how is this verse, what's the wajhu dulala, how is this verse a proof or a statement to show the status of the ulama because there is no testimony there is no witness greater than the witness that Allah gives about himself and Allah here gave a witness about the greatest thing which creation needs to know which is Tawheed that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels are also a witness upon that and also the people of knowledge are a witness upon that chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be witnesses 
So that is their status, that these people, Allah has chosen them to be a witness for the purpose of our, of our creation, which is to worship Allah alone and to establish Tawheed. So the ulama, they have a high status in the sight of Allah. No, we're not like the Christians. We don't say that the ulama are infallible. We're not like that. They have mistakes, but they are of high status in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we should respect them. The Prophet Allah tells us elsewhere, إِنَّمَا يَقْشَ اللَّهِ مِنْ إِبَادِهِ الْأُلَمَاءِ Verily that those who have true fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the scholars, those who have knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the important point, we have to have respect and understand the status of the ulama. Yes, there are those from amongst them who claim to be scholars, but they are known as ulama su. They are evil scholars, right? They are those who use the knowledge for evil purposes, but they are not to be taken as an excuse for us to go ahead and speak about everybody else. None of us have the right to do that. We, don't, we can't say because such and such scholar is bad or he's proven to be bad, now we can go ahead and speak about everybody else. No, we have to respect the scholars. The Salaf before us, they said that the, the flesh of the scholars is poisonous. And the one who eats this flesh, meaning backbites them, then his heart will die. Allah will cause the spiritual death of this person. So be very careful about how we speak and we mention the name of the scholars. The presence of ulama amongst us in our societies are like gates. They're like iron gates between falsehood and evil entering upon us. They are the ones who protect us from that. But if the scholars become weakened in society or less in number, you will see that the floodgates open up for falsehood. Nobody now can stand and can debate those who come with falsehood. We don't have the knowledge to do so. But if the scholars become less and less, or people stop trusting the scholars because people keep backbiting them and exposing their mistakes, which are minor mistakes, then nobody would want to take from the scholars. And then the, the floodgates of falsehood will open up and falsehood will become easy to be spread in society. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the hadith, which is mutafiqun alayh in Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said, Inna Allah ta'ala la yantazi'u ilm intiza'al min al-ibad walakin yantazi'u ilm biqabd al-ulama hatta idha lam yabqa aliman hatta idha lam yabqa aliman ittakhada al-nas ru'usan juhalan fasu'ilu fa'aftaw bi ghayri ilm fadallu wa adallu the Prophet وسلم, said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't take away knowledge, he doesn't snatch away knowledge by snatching it away from the hearts or from the people. Rather what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does, he takes away their knowledge by taking away the righteous scholars one by one. You find that the righteous scholars, they pass away and what happens? Then there's none left in the society or the community to give true fatwa. So what the people do, they go to the foolish people, the people who have no real knowledge but they're good at speaking. They're good at making Twitter accounts and Facebook accounts and videos on YouTube. So the people take them as being scholars. They ask them and then those people give fatwa without knowledge. They misguide themselves and they misguide others. Is that not what you see in front of you today? Is that not what you see in front of you today? That everybody's sitting at the feet, the feet, everybody's taking from those who have no real knowledge and they've left alone the scholars and the real students of knowledge. Much of this is because the scholars are disparaged in the eyes of the people and people they don't take from them, them anymore. Another, another reason is what was clearly mentioned in the hadith that Allah has taken away many of the righteous scholars. Because you find that as we get closer to the end of times, the ilm will start to disappear. So we need to respect the scholars and we need to be around them whilst we have them. If you ever hear of a sheikh in your vicinity, I mean anybody who is a qualified sheikh, go to him, benefit from him. Make sure you make the effort. It's not always going to be the case. Those of you who used to come here eight years ago, you can tell the difference now. Eight years ago, these masjids used to be packed. We used to have visiting scholars all the time coming to this place. Look at it now. You've got miskin like me sitting in front of you, talking. This is our situation, reality. I'm not saying that out of humbleness. That's the reality. Where are our scholars? Where are the students of knowledge? They're becoming less and less. So if you do find one, take hold of him. Don't let him go because that may be your last chance in your lifetime to benefit from that particular person of knowledge. One last thing to mention about knowledge is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran for those who want to seek knowledge, Have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means that you put between yourself and Allah a barrier of, from his punishment, from his anger. And that barrier is that you do everything that he commanded you to do 
and you stay away from the things that he commanded you to stay away from. That is the reality of taqwa. And if you do that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will teach you. That's what the verse says. You have taqwa of Allah, Allah will teach you. So if you want to seek the knowledge, the foundation is to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If there's anything which was correct, it was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any mistakes and shortcomings were for myself and shaitan. And if you have any clarification, clarifications or questions, then feel free to ask. And wa jazakumullah khairan.